So welcome to Fit is the Fiddle Plus. Uh, I am Kathy Benner, I'm a passive income coach, and we have a meetup group and a Facebook group, both under the name of Fit as a Fiddle Plus. And we're all about health and wellness, but it doesn't just mean our physical health. It's, it's a little bit of everything. It's our emotional, our mental, our physical, and even our financial. And so uh, we had a guest that was scheduled this evening and she was not able to join us. And she was going to talk a little bit um, about changing her mindset back when she was struggling and was going to talk a little bit about financial health tonight. Um, but she was unable, she's from the UK and she was unable to join us. So hopefully we'll be able to have her on a future episode. And so tonight it, you get me and you get Rita. Rita is my co-host, my co-mod on this particular uh, podcast. And so with that, I wanted to just start by asking Rita a couple of questions. Um, Rita, back in the day, go back, mm. back, back, back in the day. Um, <laughs> Briefly, what is your backstory on how you actually came to being a, a health and wellness coach? And I know currently you're taking one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, how did you come to do that? Well, um, thank you uh, for that question. Um, so I, I really was in the entrenched in the conventional medical model uh, for 20 years because it's what I always wanted to do. Um, I graduated from PA school and I worked in, uh, in the conventional medical surgical field, medicine field, all kinds of specialties there and absolutely loved it for 20 years. Um, but at the end of that 20 years, I just started to see more and more, and this is probably around 2000, uh, 2010, 11, where the patients, I worked a lot in surgery, and the patients were just getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And I realized one day it was like, it was unusual to have a patient on the operating room table that wasn't overweight or obese. And, you know, we have to transport the patients, of course, when they're under anesthesia, they can't help us move themselves. So we have to do all the heavy lifting and nurses have to do it on the floors and stuff like that when patients need assistance. And I realized like it started to take its toll even more and more. And so I was like, what is going on here? Because, you know, in the surgical world, you know, you're not paying so much attention to what's going on in the preventative health and wellness space. Um, but after I left my job in New York and came to North Carolina, um, after 20 years of being a PA, I ended up working, finding a job working in a weight loss clinic. Um, and I just realized that, um, when people are eating a healthy diet, moving their bodies, having, living a healthy lifestyle, they can not only lose the weight that they want to lose, but all these chronic conditions were getting better and better. The diabetes got went away, the high, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, acid reflux, everything was just getting better and better. And that just uh, really fueled and re-energized my passion to want to help people. Because that's why I went into medicine. That's why medical mm -hmm. providers go into the field of medicine, because we want to help people make an impact, make a difference. Absolutely. Um, and I didn't, yeah. And and as far as surgery is rewarding, because it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a quick fix. You know, they come in feeling horrible, you fix them up, they feel great. And, and it's, and it's, it's a great and rewarding, but you also find in, in medicine that you get those repeat offenders, especially people who work in emergency rooms. You know, they see the people coming in with the same problems over and over related to these chronic conditions, whether their blood sugar is out of control, whether high blood pressure, or they have a stroke or a heart attack, all these chronic illness conditions. So yeah, I mean, I've got frustrated with feeling like I wasn't really making that much of an impact is with what I was doing. Um, so I decided that I wanted to focus on preventative health and wellness, because it's so rewarding to see people actually get better. <laughs> and, uh, you know, be able to reverse these chronic conditions. So that's what really uh, got me passionate about wanting to be a health coach. And I was perfectly fine with not prescribing drugs anymore. And um, I mean, I, I do at on a part time basis where I do still function in a PA role, but uh, for my convention, my uh, private virtual practice and private health coaching clients, and so I don't need to prescribe drugs. I help them get off of them. And that's so much more rewarding than being able to dole out prescriptions all day. <laughs> well, what made you decide to, to go the holistic route? Because with your background, it just seems like 
it would it would just be a given, you know, because you had all of that background and, and you you would be like, OK, I'm going to refer you to this doctor and he's going to give you these prescriptions and you're going to feel better and get better. Uh, what made you decide you wanted to kind of go to the holistic side? Because it helps people get better. Um, when we work in our conventional model, people don't really get better. We just manage what they have. It's like you have high blood pressure, you go and you, you get a blood pressure medication. Your doctor says, come back in three months. You get your blood pressure checked again. If it's controlled, you stay on that drug. If it's not controlled, they add another one. And that's the model. And that's the model for everything. Same with diabetes. It's just one more drug, one more drug, one more drug for this, for that, the complications of one drug, then you get another drug. And people will never really get better. It's just managing things. Um, and with a holistic approach of you know, teaching people how to live live a healthy lifestyle, you can reverse all of those conditions so they don't need the drugs and it helps them, you know, to be healthier overall, because even though you're on the medications, it doesn't reduce your overall risks like changing your lifestyle does. So people say, well, I'm fine. I'm taking my medication. It was like, yeah, but you're, you're still on that trajectory for those chronic, the damage from those chronic conditions to get progressively worse over time, which is the opposite case when you learn how to live a healthy lifestyle. So Boy, that's yeah. so tough though, to make those changes. Mark and I, we eat out a lot. It uh -huh. is so hard to choose better and to make healthier choices when you go to these restaurants. And not only, not only is, is it tough to, to make a good choice, but let's say you go to a restaurant and you're thinking, oh, I'm just, I'm going to have the salmon and I'm going to have some broccoli. Well, mm -hmm. again, it's only as good as the, as what the food is that they have shipped in. And right. so, you know, it's, it's just so hard. There's so many preservatives and everything mm -hmm. that goes into our food. I'm surprised we're as healthy as we are. Yeah, <laughs> with, with the diets that we have and, and the mm -hmm. lifestyles that we live, I'm really surprised that we're as healthy as we are. And so how do you maneuver that? <clears throat> and because, you know, a lot of times you have these lifestyles that appear to be healthy, but yet you're still maybe struggling with your weight. You're still struggling with the diabetes. You're still struggling with the high blood pressure. And you tell yourself you're doing all the right stuff and that you're mm -hmm. eating correctly and that you're being active and you're still not getting the results. So what, where do you go from there? Yeah. Well, you know, about 70% of the population thinks that they're eating healthy, but they're actually not. Um, <clears throat> and the challenge is that unfortunately our, our conventional providers, including myself, none of us were trained in lifestyle medicine and nutritional uh, wellness um, we're not trained about, you know, the, to talk about the damage that fast food causes and, you know, these, um, these processed vegetable seeds, oil and chemically laden foods. None of that is taught in medical schools or in nursing schools, PA schools. Um, so that's, you know, where the problem really comes in. But um, that's why I like to just talk about the fact that it is possible um, to, live a healthy and vibrant life that's free of these chronic conditions. And that's why I like doing the coaching and talking about it in, you know, public speaking and at my church where I lead a healthy lifestyles ministry to just teach people um, just the simple, basic foundational things that can have a tremendous impact that they've never learned before. I mean, I I've had people who come to me all the time and say, um, yeah, my A1C, which is for people who don't know, is the long acting blood sugar test. It tells you about three month average blood sugar. And that's a pretty common test for most conventional practitioners to do for people on an annual physical. Um, but I find that people come to me and they've had three years worth of lab data that shows that their A1C has been elevated. And what have they done about it? Nothing. Um, not them, but their practitioners, just like, well, try to eat better. We'll keep watching it. And what does that mean? We just keep watching it until it becomes diabetes. And then we prescribe a medication for it. Um, so I feel like um, 
people have to really want it. Um, they really um, have to be an advocate for themselves because the conventional teaching is not helping people to get better. Um, so they have to really kind of go outside the box um, out of, of the conventional model to search, you know, for what they want. And, you know, that is happening more and more now with the internet age and social mm -hmm. media age and people seeing, you know, people out there who have like myself and yourself who have programs like we do that are not being given to them, you know, in, in the medical uh, spaces. So, um, yeah, they, they do really do have to want it, but, it, and then they have to find the right person, you know, that can help them um, achieve that. So, yeah. And it's but so it's easy. So rewarding. To, yeah. It's so easy to slide back into your lifestyle. You can say, oh, I really want this and I'm really going to do this. And of course it's like every January, every fitness center, you know, has all of these brand new memberships. And by February 15th, you know, they're empty. Yeah. Then. Right. <laughs> Whether you still yeah. pay for your membership or not, you know, yeah, and it's one of those things where you know you you hit it hard and you go, I'm going to do this thing, but it is hard to stay on mm -hmm. that type of a lifestyle yeah. because society keeps telling us, you know, go get a happy meal, <laughs> right? Exactly, and I feel like, and I feel like that's the biggest obstacle that I come across with my patients and clients is that the stressed out lifestyles that we live in. States. Um, we're overworked, overstressed, poor, not sleeping. Um, we don't have time for our self-care. Um, we so we we don't make those healthy meal choices. We do eat out a lot. We go through these fast food places, and then we're, you know, we have to succumb to, to what's available there. So it really does take somebody who is really wants to be proactive and it's really, really important to them to make these changes in order to, you know, find the right people to help coach them through and, and learn how to do it. Um, I just, I wanted to share with you, there's, there's a book that's on my list to read that I learned about recently, but there was a couple of quotes and that I wanted to share with you. And the book is called The Healthy Deviant. Um, and one of the quotes is, um, a healthy deviant is any person who willingly defies unhealthy norms and conventions in order to achieve a high level of vitality, resilience, and autonomy. And the author is Pilar Gerasimo. And the other one is, let's reframe the act of being healthy in an unhealthy world as a creative, heroic, and profoundly exciting act of social rebellion. So if we more, more of us need to become the healthy deviants, it does take courage, you know, yes. because like you said, you, yes. you have a very social life. You go out with friends a lot and dinners and things like that. And you really have to make very intentional uh, choices and strategic planning um, to, you know, eat a healthy meal and not go overboard on the alcohol. And then the appetizers, the deep fried blooming onion and the desserts and, you mm -hmm. know, all of that stuff. So, I mean, that's why I love coaching people um, because I can help them with that. When they, when they say, Hey, Rita, I don't know what to do. I've got this event. I'm going to this restaurant. You know, how do I stay on track? I look at the menu with them. I go over it with them and say, okay, what would you want to pick? Um, and then I help them make a healthy swap or tell them what you can and do, you know, maybe swap out this side for a different side. Um, swap out the, um, the, instead of the French fries, have the side salad or, or the, or, a, um, the, the grilled veggies, steamed veggies with it, or, you know, so the cream sauces and, you know, how to kind of swap things out and know what kind of oil things are cooked in. So, and, you know, some people are afraid, you know, to speak up for what they want and they're like, Oh, I don't want to be a burden or, you know, look like have everyone looking at me because I'm being different, you know, but it does take courage and to be a healthy deviant, but I am one of it, them. It, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. It is, it is tough. And uh, sometimes I find that it's easier if I travel with my snacks with me instead yes. of just waiting until I get hungry. Cause if I wait till I get hungry, that's when I eat the wrong stuff. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cause we're starving. And by that time we're like, we want just anything in sight. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, Big Mac sounds good. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. And oh, when you just think about what is in that, oh, yeah. <laughs> it even it even makes you cringe if you just if you just look at what is in a Big Mac mm. and how many people. I mean, you drive by and the line is clear around 
the yeah. McDonald's every everywhere we go, the McDonald's yeah. woman, you know, booming yeah. business because mm-hmm. they're inexpensive. Right. You know, but again, that tells you they're they're not purchasing the best cut of anything because exactly because they're very inexpensive. Highly it's a great processed. Way to, highly processed. It's a great mm-hmm. way to feed the whole family, all the kids, mm-hmm. you know, and they like it. Yes. They'll eat it. Tastes and great. You can afford it. Next thing you know. You've lots got of salt, lots yeah, of salt, you, lots of sugar makes anything taste good, right? Oh, well, and then but, again, of course, they add more salt and, and yeah. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, you've got you know the minivan full of obese kids, right? Absolutely. And they're at home playing the video games. They're not right. out, you know. I mean, you still, I, I'm, I realize I'm being stereotypical because there's still a lot of kids that are out there playing softball, playing sports, doing mm-hmm. their thing. We we live just a few doors from our high school. We've got the track team that runs by twice a day, the boys and the girls. Nice. And you know, so there there are, you know, that group of kids that are very active, but you have a whole society of kids that are not getting off the couch. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely and right. So how do you solve that? Because sometimes it's a family problem, not right. just a personal problem. Yeah. You know, it's a real challenge because they don't even have access to healthy food in the schools either because the school lunches are and, bre- and breakfasts are not even healthy either. Um, and I know my my daughter's high school, you know, the kids, the juniors and seniors, they all want to leave uh, the campus for their high, for their lunch breaks. And where do they go? It's all fast food all around the school. Um, so it's a, it's a big challenge. And, you know, this is the first generation where children, um, where where children are, some children are dying before their parents will because of the chronic diseases that are developing at such a young age. Heart disease, um, high cholesterol, diabetes, these conditions were never pediatric conditions before, but they are now. And it's really, really sad. So um, honestly, you know, I, I think it has to start with the parents um, most most of the time, depending on the age, you know, of the child, um, because the child learns, you know, what they're taught in the home. Um, so I think, we, you know, the parent, we got to really start with the parents, but I understand how challenging it is. You know, they're single parent homes, they're working two jobs, that they're exhausted. Um, they don't have help. Um, so it can be, you know, a real, real challenge. So. Well, in my easy. world, yeah, in my world, my crock pot is my friend because nice. I get a crazy busy day. And so again, we're retired. And so it's almost easier to just go out and eat than it is to cook something. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's almost cheaper to go out and eat than it is to buy groceries and have to fix something and cook something. And so it is an effort, you know, Mm -hmm. at at our age, especially where if we're going to eat healthy, you know, just, just put the chicken in the crock pot. Yeah. Right. Right. (laughs) Um, And so that way it does make it healthier. Uh, Yeah. You're eating, you know, I mean, I've got fresh potatoes, um, fresh veggies, all of that can go in my crock pot. And it's not frozen and canned and all of mm-hmm. that. It's yep. the real McCoy. Now, yep. um, now you have to also investigate where all of, even though you're shopping around the outside of the grocery store, mm-hmm. where where the Whole Foods are and not all mm-hmm. the processed stuff in the middle of the grocery store. So for those that are listening, there's a tip for you. Shop around the outside of your grocery store, not down the middle. Right. And But when you're doing that, you still have to pay attention where some of that stuff comes from. You do. Because when you're looking at labels, which, which again, I think you, I I don't, I don't, I hate to say to, to watch the labels so much that it becomes such an obsession that, you know, that you're really a stick in the mud. Nobody even wants to be around you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I think early on, you need to read some labels so that you know what your go-to items are. You know what you can trust, you know, the brands that you can trust, you know, the labels that you can trust and, and just pay attention at least up front for a while so that you can kind of tuck those things away in your mind. So when you do go shopping, you know, the brands and the labels that you can trust that you've already scoped out. And then if you want to add something new, 
to your menu, you can then pay attention to a label or two, but it will actually give you a little bit more freedom in your shopping and you won't be a stick in the mud. <laughs> yeah. And you know, nowadays too, we have so many home delivery services. So that really can take um, a big load off of people who are, sorry, my husband is walking through. No, 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 that's good. That's good. It's um, good. <laughs> so home delivery services, you know, i get some of my, my highest quality meat um, from, from regenerative farms that are, okay. you know, pasture raised, um, um, organic fee, um, you know, or only fed or organic, um, well, Sorry, not organic, but um, antibiotic free, hormone free. They're grazing on the grass, which is where, you know, their natural, ha you know, feeding habitat is from. They're not in these, you know, conventional feeding operations where they're being fed really unhealthy food and hi that's highly processed. Um, and they can deliver right to your door. I mean, you can get beef and pork and chicken and you, um, there's other, you know, I encourage people to definitely eat local. Um, go to your farmer's markets because um, the farther the food has to travel, the more mm -hmm. processed it has to be in order to let it, especially produce, to let it last that long just to get it to the grocery store. And then, you know, with that processing, it, it depletes uh, it, of nutrients. Um, so, you know, search out your local farms. I have a couple of great resources on my website um, that I use. It's, it's ritabrewer.com. And if you click on the shopping tab, there's a food and supplements page. So it's got a link for some of these um, to know. farmers, um, some local uh, websites like Eat Wild or Local Harvest, where you can plug in your zip code um, and then it will show you um, organic farmers, um, or, you know, that carry different products, maybe it's produce or eggs or meat products, fish, um, that you can buy in your area directly from those, um, uh, farmers, which is great because we need to support the farmers. They are really oh, hard working people and, um, they're, they don't get paid what they deserve. Um, and they are so dedicated, you know, people with good farming practices, they are so dedicated, you know, to the quality food that they, sh they provide for us. So I, I believe take out the middleman, get out of the grocery store, go straight to the farmers and you just, you're going to get much better quality there too. So, um, and, yeah. and it's a win-win because those very farmers that are, are really conscientious about what they're putting out there are the ones that are not using all of yeah. the bad stuff. And mm -hmm. so consequently, they're not making as much on, on their harvest as right. all of the farmers that are using all, Mass all production. of yeah. the chemicals. And Absolutely. so it is, it is a win-win. So it helps us help them, which in turn helps us. And Absolutely. so, yeah, I agree. So go, go to Rita's website readerbrewer.com yeah. and click on her shopping page and take a mm -hmm. look at some of those now a yeah. quick story i went to the grocery store the other day and i saw a gal she was over around all of the fruits and vegetables and she had a spray bottle and was spraying everything and i thought um is she just <laughs> you know what what was the deal so i finally said to her I said, oh, I said, what are you spraying? And she goes, oh, I don't know. They tell us, um, she said, I just work here. And she said, I'm supposed to spray all the, and this is all of the fruits and vegetables, the fresh fruits and whole fruits and vegetables. And she said, uh, she said, it's some kind of an oil. She said, it makes everything shiny oh. and it makes it, it makes it look better. And mm. I said, oh, that's interesting. Well, then I just kind of kept an eye on her and, and she, um, she finally put her spray bottle down and it reminded me. Uh, of one of those spray bottles that you would put like Windex in or something. Yeah. And uh, so anyhow, she put it down on her cart and walked away. I went over and I looked at the bottle. No label on the bottle. Yeah, at all. I'm not surprised. No label at all. So I have mm -hmm. no idea what she was What's spraying. There? Yep. So please, please, please wash all your fruits and vegetables. Yes. Absolutely. And even if they're organic too, um, because there's still some, you know, some residues and people's hands touching everything. She, she sprayed everything, the organic ones and the right. Mm. She was she sprayed the whole row. Yeah. I get I get everything out into my sink, all my produce into my sink for after the grocery store. And I fill it up with um water with like a, a dilute, like a clean soap, like a Dr. Bronner's soap that's non-toxic and some white vinegar. And I just let it soak there for a little while. Um, and then I rinse everything really good and just lay them all out on, you know, dish towels for everything to dry really well. 
Um, and that help that vinegar and soap helps to take those coatings um, off of the outside. So you reduce uh, some of that residue. So, yeah. That's and they a good say to even, and, and, and I've not done this in the past. And so this was kind of a, an aha for me. Um, I read where you should even wash your bananas before you handle them and peel them and eat those mm. okay. because she sprayed everything. She yeah. was spraying the bananas, the apples, the oranges, the, you know, then she was spraying, um, mm. you know, all of, all of the peppers and just ev all the whole fruits and vegetables. She was just, she just was with the spray bottle, just spritzing mm. the whole thing. Yeah. And, and it made everything really beautiful and the colors were. Oh yeah. Bright and shiny chemicals. Bright and shiny. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but the bottle had no label. And so. Mm -hmm. Um, that was just a huge aha for me because once she packed it all in and left the area, people shopping down through there would think they were making a healthy choice. Right. And, and they wouldn't even know maybe that they needed to go and wash all yeah. of those yeah. items. So that was, that was a little shocking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Very disturbing, would, isn't it? Another reason to get out of the grocery store. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I get that. I get that. So how has your faith helped in, uh, in you creating your coaching programs? Oh, so much. Um, honestly, I feel like that's how it all started um, with through, um, I think, feel like God just speaking to me in my, in my prayers, I'm in my, in my sleep um, and waking me up. And that's how I really know, like when God really speaks to me about something that I need to do, it's always in the middle of the night and I am a hard <laughs> sleeper. I do not interrupt my sleep. I sleep solid. I need my eight, eight hours at least. And um, so when I wake up with like four in the morning or three in the morning with something on my mind like that I have to do, then I know that is spirit led for me. Um, and that kind of started um, quite a while ago, 11, 12 years ago, uh, when I first moved to Raleigh uh, area in North Carolina. <clears throat> and um, God put it on my heart to teach in the community because I did be, start to become really passionate about preventative health and wellness and feeling like I can't do that in our model the way it is. It's just, there's no space for it. There's no practices where I can do what I really want to do. Um, and he put it on my heart to go speak in the community. Um, so I had found a new church and was there for a while. And then I approached, um, you know, the first lady at the church and I said, I have this idea. I wanted to start a healthy lifestyles ministry so I can just teach people in the community because that's what God said. Well, you know, you can't, if you can't do it where you're currently at, go into the community, talk to the people who will listen and, and want to hear it. Um, as a volunteer. And I was like, okay. Um, and I pursued it. And it was awesome that, you know, we were led to this specific church at where I go, Raleigh North Christian Center in Raleigh, North Carolina, because the pastor and first lady were very much um, promoting good health and wellness. Um, believe, you know, what the Bible says, our body is a temple mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. And um, he wishes above all things that will prosper and be in good health. So they were really supportive of that. And they were excited that I wanted to lead the ministry. So they, they gave me the go ahead and we started it about six years ago. And um, it's, it's been a, a real blessing to me. And I just continue to follow my heart, you know, and I think for me as a health coach, even as an NPA, but so many medical providers who are going the holistic route um, mm -hmm. is because we've suffered with our own health too, you know, and realize that there were no answers for us and we're healthcare providers. You know, imagine all of the people who don't have any of the medical training who are just going and trying to get help and trying to get help and still suffering and still feeling horrible. And, you know, you go to your doctor and you get that annual blood work and you're hoping to find an answer. like, why am I tired all the time? Why am I fatigued? Why won't this heartburn go away? You know, like all these little annoyances that we just chalk up to being normal because you're getting older, they're not normal. Um, but, you know, when we learn about, you know, a holistic lifestyle and realize that we can make these things better. Um, you know, it, it's just so rewarding. So I, I just want to be that advocate for people, you know, who don't have the answers. Um, I, I want to share too, we just did a, in my church recently, we just did a drinking water challenge, you know, just to help people okay. drink more water for seven days. Um, so we got everybody engaged on our social media page. If you want to follow us, we're on Facebook. It's called RNCC Healthy Lifestyles Ministry. 
It's a okay. health ministry group there. We post health content all the time to support the community. And you don't have to be a member of our church to join it. It's, it's we want to in, invite everybody worldwide. Um, so we said, let's just calculate, figure out how much water you're drinking. Let's shoot for maybe half your body weight in ounces of water each day. We'll talk about it online. Um, and a woman just came up to me in my church yesterday. She, and she's probably close to 70 years old. And she said, Rita, she said, I did, I did the challenge. And I just wanted to tell you, she said, I didn't realize, never thought how important drinking water would be. She said, I didn't realize that I was hardly drinking anything. Um, and when I started to work up to 64 to 80 ounces of water a day, she was like, I feel amazing. <laughs> she was like, I have more energy. My joints don't hurt. She started doing a little happy dance. And, and oh, I was like, wow. so excited. And so it's so rewarding to see. And it's such a small it. thing. It's yeah. such a small tweak that you can do in exactly. your lifestyle. Exactly. And that's what I love about coaching because these small little things have such a big impact. Um, but when you put them all together, it's like woo, total life transformation, health transformation. So, I love that. I love that. Yeah, because too. I know, <clears throat> again, my background, and for those of you that know me, know that I spent about 25 years in the salon industry. And so I had clients that would come in every two weeks, every three weeks. And so I had regulars. And so some of my gals actually came to me the entire time, the entire 25 years. And I could not believe all of the health challenges that would come through the door mm -hmm. and it would just break your heart. And yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm looking at such a small piece of society that's coming through the salon door and, you know, to, to get their services. And I, I couldn't believe how many folks had all of these issues and the, and the list of medications oh, yeah. just was right. uh, um, boggled my mind. Yeah. And so I, I finally started asking a couple of the gals that was coming in. I said, I, I can't believe you're on so many medications. And they're like, well, my doctor says I got to have it. That's and it. they never questioned the doctor. But if, even if they do question the doctor, they're going to give them a story that says, well, this is just what you have to do. These are the guidelines. I mean, I can't tell you how many family members I watched their health just decline. My mom, my grandfather, you know, uncles, because I tried to teach them about a healthy and whole, uh, you know, lifestyle. And they just refused to, you know, make any changes. And they said, well, this is all, that, this is what the doctor says I need to do. So this is all I'm going to do. And it didn't work out. Well, and you know what? I think some of it too is a generational thing. I know in my mother's generation, and she's gone mm -hmm. now, but in my mother's generation, you didn't you didn't argue with the doctor. Right. If the ever. doctor said it because a lot of my mother's generation did not even go through high school. Mm -hmm. And so when a doctor said, you need to take this, they thought, well, he's educated and I'm not. And so right. I have to listen because he certainly knows better than I do. Right. Uh, because this is what he's been trained in. Right. And I think today, I think, you know, the younger generations are a little, you know, they ask more questions. Mm -hmm. And and then, of course, all of us that are in the middle, you know, not as old as our parents, but not as young as our kids, you know, we all have our Google doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not good. Yeah. But sometimes that's good because we can research and all the information is out there. Yes. You know, you just have to be able to sort through it. And that's where someone like Rita comes in because mm -hmm. Rita can help you sort through all that information that's out there because yeah. Rita has the experience on both sides. She's right. been in the, in the medical profession and the holistic side of it. And she can help you sort through all of uh, all of your Google doctorate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about you for a minute. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's, so what's, what do you want to talk about as far as your passive income or your um, financial um, teachings? What do you want to get well, into? And again, I'm a passive income coach. So um, <laughs> for me, my backstory is that I was a single mom and worked two minimum wage jobs to try to pay the rent and keep things going, which of course didn't fare well for my health. And because I was working way too long and too hard uh, to try to make ends meet. And so it was a struggle for me all those years. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna come up on retirement. And if 
you know, I'm, I'm living payday to payday now. How am I going to make enough to save in advance enough to where when I'm not working, I can have a, a, a decent life. And again, I wasn't looking to get rich or, you know, have some big mansion of a house or whatever. I just, I can remember, I can remember this. I can remember being a single mom and working two jobs and I would be coming home late at night and I would drive in my poor little car that I had a hard time keeping going. I would drive by and these houses would have their lights on. And I would be on a side street heading to my little, I lived in a little mobile home and I would be heading over to my little mobile home. And I remember thinking, oh, someday maybe I'll have a house. And I remember thinking that I just wanted a little house. It didn't mm -hmm. matter. It didn't have to be fancy. It just had yeah. to be mine, you know? Yeah. And I just remember with that struggle. And so finally um, I, I ran across a gal and my aha moment was I ran across a, a gal who was a nail tech and she was young, didn't have college. And uh, I don't know what made me ask her, but I, on a fluke, you know, cause I wore acrylic nails as part of my little uniform. You know, I always had to have my hair done and my nails done. And, you know, cause I was trying to make it up the corporate ladder, if you will, to get a decent income so I could quit that second job. And so anyhow, I went to get my nails done. I met her and I just, for some reason I asked her, I was about, I was in my late thirties, maybe 40. And I said, how much can you make doing nails anyway? I'm thinking, poor thing. She's probably starving to death. And when she told me my chin was on the table, I could not believe she said, well, now that, remember this is 25, 30 years ago. She said, yeah, she goes, I'm, I'm making, you know, like a thousand dollars a week. And I'm like, what? What? Just a technician, like not being the owner of the business, just a, a, a hired technician. Just a 19 year old doing nails in a summer kitchen on the back of her mom and dad's house. Her dad had made her a little nail salon. She went to nail school, took nine weeks of schooling, was doing nails and was making a thousand dollars a week. Wow. Well, that long ago, when you think teachers were making that salary. Mm -hmm. and she was 19, no college, making you know, what a professional person would be making. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so I think opportunities come. And, and that's one of the first things that when I'm coaching on my one-on-ones is I tell my folks, watch for these opportunities because opportunities are all around us. And yeah. sometimes we don't see them. We don't mm -hmm. see the forest for the trees. And so I said, watch for those opportunities. And so I did some research after I left that day. And, um, and I thought, well, I didn't know if I wanted to sit behind a nail table forever, but I thought I could maybe work a couple of nights a week as a second yeah. job. And, mm -hmm. and it would make me more money than what mm -hmm. my current second job was doing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so I thought, you know, then I can maybe save a little and hopes to have something for retirement. So anyway, I, I went to, as they say, nail school, um, which was cosmetology school. I did just the nails only program because I could do it part time. Um, nine weeks later, I graduated, took my state boards and took my first job doing nails. And uh, I went to school Tuesday night, Thursday night and Saturday morning. And so I thought, well, I'll just do nails Tuesday night, Thursday night, Saturday morning, because I already had Jennifer covered with childcare. I made more money working Tuesday night, Thursday night and Saturday morning than I did on my corporate full-time job. Wow. And that's when that was my second aha, but that was a much mm. bigger aha. And I said, <laughs> you know what? I need to look at this Yeah, because this just might be the ticket. Mm -hmm. Well, now again, it's all about opportunity. You have to kind of keep your eye open and be able to discern when something is a great opportunity. Uh, because today it wouldn't be quite the opportunity because acrylic nails were all the rage back then. Mm -hmm. Acrylic nails are not today. There's a certain amount of acrylic nails, but you have the gels and you have a lot of ladies are now going natural, back to natural nails. They're not wearing those acrylics. But at that time, every 14 year old had a full set of pink and whites on, which is the most expensive mm -hmm. type of acrylic nails. So anyway, long story short, I decided I was going to be the best acrylic nail person in my town. And I achieved that. I had folks, you know, for years walk in and say, everybody says if we're wearing pink and white acrylics, we need to go to Kathy. And I'm like, mm -hmm. have a seat. <laughs> yeah. I, I just started cranking out nail appointments and I was able to homeschool my daughter and I was able to buy my first place, my first house. And then I was able to buy my first salon building. 
And then That's from awesome. there, I, I leveraged my equity and then I was able to buy another salon building and then yet a third and a fourth and a fifth. And then I started buying some single families. Wow. <laughs> buy and holds. And so now today, and then of course I met Mark right about that time. And, uh, and did and you get your, um, your, you said hair too. So did you get your hair certification too? I or did no? not. I did not. I just did nails. But once I started a salon and started my own salon, I was able to hire hairstylists and mm. other nail techs and massage therapists. And I had tanning beds. And so all of that was income mm. producing. You had the business mindset, which not everybody has. I, so, I get that. I yeah. Get that. So That's then I was awesome. able to leverage that equity and just grow from there. And so I, at age 40, I thought I was never going to ever be able to retire. And I actually ended up retiring early. I retired at age 60. I did not work all the way to age 65. And I actually retired at age 60. Nice. And so, and now I'm 67. So, so now, you know, mm. I've been retired for seven years and that whole, the whole cosmetology thing feels like a whole lifetime ago. Wow. But it, it really, it really did well for me. Um, you know, I made some good, you know, we never know when we're in the middle of the, the decisions, is this going to be a good one or not? And uh, I think you just, you have to be able to reinvent yourself and, and know what your skill set is, know what you're good at. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so it's, it's just a process. Yeah. So you wanted to, because you, you knew what the struggle was like, you wanted to help people to, um, create their, uh, passive income as well. And that's why you became a passive income coach, right? Right. So when I retired, I knew I needed to yet again, reinvent myself. And, uh, and I had a business coach, so I'm all for coaches, everybody. Mm -hmm. So get a coach. And so I had a business coach at the time. And, uh, and once I made the decision that I was going to retire early, uh, cause Mark and I, we wanted to do some traveling. And so, um, I said, I just don't want to sit at home though. I want to, I want to give back. I now I'm at the place in my life where I, you know, I, I, I want to help like you, I, I want to make a difference mm -hmm. for some other folks that have struggled like I have. And mm -hmm. so that's when he said, well, make a list of everything that, you know, you're passionate about. And, uh, and I did that. And so he said, what is your common theme there or thread there? And it was all about freestyle living. So mm -hmm. passive income, you have to have the passive income if you're going to have freestyle living. It just goes Amen. hand in hand. Yeah. And so that's how I became a passive income coach. And yeah. my whole tagline is, is to help you find your freestyle lifestyle. That's and awesome. so- so that's, that's how I started out coaching. And so now I have um, eight different lanes. And yeah, I was going to say, so this is your idea of retirement now. So yeah. you probably work more now than you ever did before, but you love it, right? Tell I love what it. You, what you're doing. Yeah. But I actually. All the different I, lanes you have. <laughs> I may look like I work more than I did, but I worked a lot more in the, in the salon industry than I do now. I do um, probably eight Zoom calls a month like this and uh, an hour each. So eight hours the entire month. Mm -hmm. And then I, I like you, I've got some one-on-one -on -one coaching clients and I don't take on very many because I really don't want to work that hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, and I can reach more people in a group. And so I do these zoom calls. And so everything has to do with passive income. So I have a whole real estate lane. I have a writing lane. I have a networking lane. And then I have this lane of health and wellness, because I truly believe that health comes before wealth. Um, I, I ran across a quote and I can't quote it exactly the way it's, it's, it was said, but the Dalai Lama basically said what confused him about man was that man would work all his life and give up his health. And then he would spend all of his money to try to buy his health back. That's right. That's at the right. end of life. Yeah. And that, really resonated with me. And I thought there needs to be a balance. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wanted to do this podcast with you, Rita, because you bring the balance to me as a passive income coach in the fact that you need to put your health first and mm -hmm. then work on your passive income second. That's right. I remember that the same kind of similar story about kind of the lifestyles that we live. You know, we, st we, we there was the story was, I can't remember it all, but it was like the story was the man who, you know, grew up poor. He was kind of living, you know, 
very, very minimalist lifestyle, hanging out on the streets with his buddies and just, you know, playing cards and stuff like that. And then, you know, dreaming of the bigger opportunities and worked his way up the ladder, got the education, got the corporate job, worked all his life to make all this money and, you know, have the big houses and cars and stuff like that, only to at the end of it all, retire and go back to the same lifestyle that he had before all of that ever started. So we really have to embrace that minimalist and s simplistic mm -hmm. lifestyle because it's so important for our health. And I know I've suffered personally um, just from living, you know, a high stress lifestyle, you know, work life balance, education, family, you know, just trying to do it all, be the super moms that we try to be. Um, and then our health crashes. Uh -huh. So, you know, there's really something to be said for keeping life simple and not engaging in too many activities, learning how to say no, learning how to set boundaries um, for self-care and, and making yourself a priority and putting that at the top of your list. Spend an hour, hour a day doing something that's for yourself, even if it's broken up 15 minutes here and there, um, because there's so much that our body needs in order to nourish itself. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for walking a 5k every day, um, which is for those of you that know the difference, it's just three miles, 3.11, I think is a 5k. And so I tell all of my uh, guys and gals that are in my coaching programs, I said, just, you know, if, even if you find something on a YouTube video, you know, to walk in place or whatever, and there's hundreds of them out there, yeah. um, just get moving and just, you know, you can do 15 minutes after breakfast, 15 minutes after lunch and 15 minutes after supper and you've walked a 5k. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have and to people do don't, they yeah. stay in front of the computer and they don't have to, we have to teach them about the boundaries to allow themselves. It's okay to step away from your computer and not answer every single email. The second it comes into your inbox and set boundaries for even mm -hmm. certain times of day that where I check my emails twice a day at the first 45 minutes or, or an hour or however long it takes. And then that's it. You don't keep checking in between. You're not checking at nighttime when you're in bed try, trying to get ready to go to sleep and you're scrolling your phone and answering work emails. Um, and people do it all the time and, yes. and they don't, they think it's so in think they think it's normal until their health, you know, starts crashing and we have to work on, you know, those sleep habits and eating habits to, have good eating hygiene, just slow down and don't multitask. Don't eat in your car. Just sit and mindfully eat your food slowly and chew really well and have good digestion. Because if you don't digest what you're putting in your mouth, you can't absorb the nutrients. So those nutrients are not going to get into the cells and provide the cellular functions that your nervous system needs, your heart needs, your brain needs, Every all these uh, processes um, that we, we don't even absorb the nutrients if we're, if we're in this rush, rush, you know, hyper, hyper stimulated state all the time, which is where our entire culture is. And absolutely, it's, it's, it's a big challenge. Well, and I think, I think our culture in the, in the, in the States is different than in even some other countries. And so yeah. um, I'm, I'm looking so forward to doing some international travel and uh, learning how some other cultures handle things. And yes. uh, they say that when we travel uh, to some countries that we better be prepared to do a siesta every afternoon because everything closes down and everyone just relaxes. Uh, and then it doesn't amp up again for dinner until like seven or eight o'clock at night. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm like, this is gonna be so fun just to explore some of those yes. other cultures. Wouldn't that be amazing if we did that in the United States? Yeah, because they, you know, again, the Mediterranean diet is not just the diet, it's the whole lifestyle. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, so I much. get that. So I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. for all that. It's Rita, so this has been so much fun. Again, for those that are listening, go to ritabrewer.com. You can see Rita's name here in the square, but it's R I T A B R E W E R, or go to kathybinner.com. And Kathy is with the K, K A T H Y. Binner is B as in boy, I N N E R.com. So readerbrewer.com, kathybinner.com, and check out what we have to offer. And so be sure and tune in. We're here every month on Fit as a Fiddle Plus. We do have a meetup group and we also have a Facebook group. So feel free to look those up and join us there as well. So hope thanks. you enjoyed the content, everyone. Come yes. find, find us on our websites and we'd love to chat with you more. 
Yes, thank you so much for joining us this evening and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.